Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Today we are going to examine the nature of time and the relationship between time and the human mind. With me in the studio is Terence McKenna, a specialist in shamanistic traditions and also hallucinogens. Terence is the co-author with his brother Dennis of Psilocybin, the Magic Mushroom Grower's Guide, and also The Invisible Landscape, Time, Hallucinogens, and the I Ching. In addition, he is the developer of a computer software program called TimeWave Zero and is the founder of Botanical Dimensions, a nonprofit organization devoted to preserving hallucinogenic plants as used by native peoples throughout the world. Welcome, Terence. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be with you again. <clears throat> you know, shamanistic peoples and uh, early peoples throughout the entire world have all been involved in s systems of what we call divination it could be throwing bones or using the I Ching or looking at the entrails of animals or clouds of smoke but each system seemed to involve some sort of a unique way of linking the human mind with with the very nature of time itself in order to understand cycles of time and understand perhaps even to predict the future. Yes, well it's certainly true that uh, pre-literate and aboriginal peoples have had an obsession with time. However, it's an obsession shared by the historical societies as well. Time seems to be the dimension about which we have the greatest anxiety perhaps because it's the dimension into which we see with the least clarity. Uh, numerous peoples throughout the world have dealt with this lack of clarity uh, as far as time is concerned by developing various methods of divination or sortilage, as it's called. The Maya to this day practice sortilage of a very complicated sort in the highlands of Guatemala. Uh, African peoples have complex divinatory systems. And we don't have to even mention the enormous sales of the I Ching and Tarodex and uh, astrology products here in the United States. Yes, the I Ching <coughs> is the divinatory system Ni Plus Ultra. It seems to very early uh, have captured the imagination of Western Orientalists James Legg and Richard Wilhelm. Their translations made it available to the Western world and the psychologist Carl Jung in inventing and discussing the phenomenon that he called synchronicity popularized the I Ching by using it as an example of this mm -hmm. particular phenomenon. And I know in the literature today, especially in transpersonal psychology, there are many psychotherapists who use the I Ching as a regular part of their practice. And parapsychologists have, have found striking evidence that the you know, coincidences of, of tossing the coins in the I Ching do have uh, psychological validity. Yes, well, the thing which amazed me about the I Ching and caused me to become so deeply involved with it is this fact that it seems to work against all rational expectation, the carrying out of this uh, random ritualistic mm -hmm. activity seems then to give a reading which is in fact applicable to the unique mm -hmm. situation. Now Jung's explanation of this was what he called uh, a causal connectedness mm -hmm. or synchronicity. This was simply the idea that it was possible for there to be a coincidence of a congruence between an internal state, a psychological state, and an exterior event. Uh, an obvious example of this would be you think of someone you haven't thought of for years and an hour later in the mail a letter arrives from them. Mm -hmm. And Jung was fascinated by these kinds of apparent uh, coordinations of the interiorized psychic sphere and the exterior three-dimensional objective world. M my approach was uh, went somewhat deeper than mm -hmm. Jung's in that I felt that uh, I had looked at many divinatory systems with the notion that I was looking at uh, artifacts of culture, uh, productions of the human mind that were to a large degree arbitrary. My involvement with the I Ching 
led me very slowly and reluctantly to the conclusion that this was not simply a product of a cultural mentality or the stance of a particular people in a time and a place, but rather that the ancient Chinese had somehow gotten a leg up even on modern physics and had produced a theory about time that was in fact objectively uh, possible to correlate with our own experience. In other words, a theory of time much more akin to a physicist's uh, description of it than a shaman's description of it. And uh, you mentioned in your introduction this time wave zero software that we've developed. We, what we've done is simply to formalize the notion of the Tao to make a deep study of the mathematics inherent in the structure of the sequence of the I Ching. See, most people are quite familiar with the fact that the I Ching is composed of hexagrams. Hexagrams have six lines. They may be broken. They may be unbroken. Less well known is the fact that there is a very ancient <coughs> tradition, even before the Han Dynasty, of a particular sequence being the correct sequence. It's called the King Wen sequence. And while it has been agreed upon by all scholars commenting on the matter that the King Wen sequence is somehow primary, no one had ever explained how it was ordered. You mean the order of hexagrams from 1 to 64? That's correct. Why is the first one the hexagram with all solid lines? Why is the second one the hexagram with all broken lines? And so forth and so on. I carried out an exhaustive mathematical analysis of the properties of the King Wen sequence and reached a number of conclusions uh, such as it is not a random <laughs> sequence. It was very, very carefully constructed uh, to conserve certain mathematical goals. For instance, uh, the number of lines that break as you transit from one hexagram to another is arranged and controlled in such a way that when you're all done, you have a ratio of even to odd of three to four. Uh, yet this is achieved without any breakages, uh, first order of different breakages of magnitude five. Mm -hmm. Now you're beginning to lose me a little bit. Yes, well what, uh, what this all means very mm -hmm. simply is that the King Wen sequence was uh, constructed by minds the equal of research mathematicians working in the world mm -hmm. today. It sort of reminds me of uh, the builders of the great uh, Greek temples who used the uh, mystical rectangle. Proportion <laughs> and symmetry seems mm -hmm. to be the central concern here. You see, we have in inherited from our fascination with Eastern philosophy the idea of Tao. And Tao in the East is a concept which antedates the introduction of Buddhism into China by many, many centuries. Tao is the notion of a flux which comes and goes, a transient medium which builds structures up and pulls them apart according to its internal dynamic. Now, because these notions were introduced to the West by mystics and philosophers and people with an interest mm -hmm. in metaphysics, it wasn't immediately grasped that a philosophy of this sort could be a mathematical mm -hmm. formalism. That if we're talking about a medium which <coughs> comes and goes, we're talking about a wave mechanical phenomenon. Well, science in the West for the past 150 years